Hello and welcome to Psych 100. My name is Melissa Ferguson and this will be our first video for the semester. We're going to start off talking about what is psychology and hopefully by the end of this video you'll understand why psychology is considered a science. To begin with, and hopefully get you to understand better what psychology is, I want to start with a few questions for you. How do you know that George Washington was the first president of the United States? So think about that for a minute. So maybe you're thinking, my teacher told me, or I read it in a history book. Well, what, what are those things? What are teachers? What are historians? They're experts, they're authorities on history, right? Especially a history teacher. So that is one way we gather knowledge and draw conclusions is we, we look to authority figures. How do you know that you really have a stomach? What makes you so sure that the sun will rise tomorrow? So maybe you took an anatomy class or you took high school biology and they taught you that, you know, you saw some of the basic anatomy and that mammals have stomachs. You know that you're a mammal, so therefore you conclude that mammals have stomachs. Maybe in terms of the sun rising tomorrow, you know that the sun rose today, it rose yesterday, it rose the day before, so the, the logical conclusion would be that it will rise tomorrow. So what type of methods of gathering information and drawing conclusions are we using there? Your reasoning. So that is another way that we gather information and draw conclusions is we reason, whether it's inductive or deductive reasoning. How do you know that this picture is a picture of an orange kitten with green eyes? And are you sure you don't have a big hole in the back of your pants? How do you know the answers to these questions? Well, perhaps this morning when you got up and you put your pants on, you didn't see a hole. Or maybe when you went to get coffee, you didn't feel a little breeze down there. Or you didn't notice anybody snickering behind you that, you know, or pointing and laughing because you had a hole in the back of your pants. Or maybe someone nice telling you that you had a hole. So you didn't, you didn't see or hear any of those things. I hope that you're looking at this picture of this little pretty kitty and you're seeing with your eyes that it's got green eyes and it's orange um, and it's adorable of course so what are you using there you're using observation now all three of these authority reasoning observation they're all important for knowledge but observation is the one that's critical for scientific knowledge in short science relies on empirical evidence So psychological science is empirical. Now you might think, well, so what does this word empirical mean? Well, empirical evidence is gathered based on careful observation, measurement, and experimentation. The, this empirical evidence is key to psychology and psychology being a science. Now, some would call the mind the same thing as the brain, and thus the study of the brain and behavior might be a better definition for what psychology is. So, Psychology studies how the physical state, the external environment, our mental processes, how all of these things influence our behavior. So think of the physical state being biology, the external environment being our social and cultural influences, those mental processes being our thoughts, cognitions, our memories, and how those influence the mind and our behaviors or the brain and our behaviors. It should also be important to mention that when we often think of psychology in terms of individual behaviors, but psychologists are also interested in studying groups and group behaviors, and that's especially an important part of social psychology. So just to summarize what psychology is here, we're going to talk about four primary objectives of psychology. Now psychology wants to describe. Using empirical methods, of course, psychologists want, psychologists want to describe behaviors. So much of what psychologists would describe would be observable behaviors. For example, in a study on social interactions, describing might involve noting how often people make eye contact during conversations, the topics that were discussed, and the body languages that they were used. Psychologists are oft also interested in describing mental processes. For example, what and how individuals recall information from long-term memory on a test. We then want to use this information to understand behaviors and mental processes. For example, if a researcher observes that people make less eye contact when they are nervous, we would then want to see if this is due to social anxiety, cultural norms, or some other explanation. We then also use this information, what we've described and, and now what we've understood, to predict behaviors and mental processes. 
let's stick with the eye contact example. Psychologists might predict that individuals with more social anxiety would make less eye contact due to social norms. Research studies could be designed to test these predictions. And finally, psychologists want to try to control behaviors, but not in a manipulative way. The idea of controlling behavior would be more um, problematic behaviors towards a desired or beneficial outcome. For example, using a therapeutic technique, different interve interventions, behavior modifications. These four objectives work to together to make psychology what it is.